Welcome back to the Nexus Games. This is our final day of the group stage. And we did not just eliminate Spain. I still can't do maths. We now, however, have only one scenario where Spain has a chance of going through the group. And they are going to be rooting for, in this next matchup, the Czech Republic. I am still Tetra, and joining me is still Kendrick Swish and still Bakery. So, guys, do you want to break down Spain and the Czech Republic's last hope here? Okay, so this is what needs to happen for the Spanish team to have a little bit of hope left in the tournament. The Czech Republic, they need a clean 2-0 against the Netherlands, and then we're going to find out who's going to advance next to Poland, who are qualified no matter yep. what happens, in a three-way tie between the Netherlands, Spain, and Czech Republic. Any other result, even a 2-1 yep. for the Czech Republic, will mean the Netherlands are the second seed out of this group. So let's have a look at the battlegrounds, the last remaining hope for both the Czech Republic and Spain. And we're going to start off with the Netherlands, removing the uh, uh, removing the Black Hearts Bay. But let's move away from Spain here, because I think it also means for the Netherlands, they could not allow themselves to lose this series. They need a 2-1 yeah. at least, but ideally, of course, a clean 2-0. They can lose, they just need one map. But yeah. That kind of pressure could still hurt a team. You still need to keep a very level head as we see the Czech Republic removing out Tomb of the Spider Queen. And remember, the Dutch team is not a very strong team. They are a dark horse team. So yeah. there's always a chance that they could crumble under this pressure. So, guys, the map is going to be Cursed Hollow okay. to begin out this series. We're bringing it in with a little bit of standard to start off with. And I actually wanted to ask you this, Bakery. The Netherlands, we were kind of hyped before this tournament started. We really thought this team had what it takes to cost some upsets. However, they had to suffer from a setback. How long, uh, excuse me, how strong is the Dutch team right now, in your opinion? So we saw them against Spain. They 2 out. Spain probably did it underperform. But when they it went up against Poland, they got absolutely demolished in a 2-0. But Spain also just got demolished in the 2-0. So I think they're about as strong as we thought they were yeah. when we came into the tournament. I think they're a very strong team. They can definitely make a semi-final run, but I'm not sure they're the best team here. So guys, remember to use those chat votes to vote for which team you think will win this match and this series. If you think the Netherlands can take this first map and immediately crush the hopes of the Czech Republic and Spain, then you can use the code hashtag NLWIN in chat. But if you believe in that underdog story of the Czech Republic, then you can use the code C, hashtag CZWIN. And it's not like the Czech Republic doesn't have anything to offer here in this tournament. They too have a couple of really talented Hero League Grandmaster Absolutely. players. Most importantly, I want to highlight our Kenny. I think his support play has been pretty, pretty good overall. Strong Malfarian the other day. And even Arzamax has a lot to offer. And you know him uh, quite well, don't you? Yeah, he uh, he's hangs around in my Discord. He's in my Twitch chat every time I do my occasional stream. Um, Definitely a strong player, definitely one of the people that I have got my eye on from the Czech Republic team. We start off with relatively standard bans. Abathur can still get pretty good value on this map, and Tassadar has been consistently in the ban phase for this entire tournament, except for the few times he has been picked. Yeah. Tassadar is just a hero that many people simply do not want to face. Can't really blame him. It's actually cool to see, though, that he too can lose games like we saw in the previous series. It's not like yeah. Tassadar is an auto win by any means. So I'm, I'm looking at the Czech Republic here and I'm thinking, how are they feeling? How are they feeling? Because if I'm the Netherlands, I am so comfortable on Cursed Hollow. I picked this map, I know it's standard, I know there's a low amount of cheese. Did the Czech Republic want to come in and cheese, or did they did they come in and want to play standard? That's the big question. It's and a very big and important question, considering that this is your lifeblood in the tournament. And I think players like Zavalos or Dacomicron, and even B Guy from the Netherlands, I'm not sure how large their hero pool is, to be honest. Whenever they seem to go in something that wasn't really their A game or their comfort zone, they didn't nearly look as threatening. We could really see that B-Guy, once he shifted away from the Anubarak, had his weaker moments, but when he played on that Anubarak, he was really, really scary. Or not even shifting away from the Anubarak, just shifting away from that style of Anubarak. Yeah. Playing that backline control 
no fascia on him himself. A uh, Nubarak, he was insane. He was one of the best players in the tournament. But as soon as people started focusing, let's kill B-Guy, let's put our damage on B-Guy, he did not look... Yeah nearly as impressive. Anub is very good at a lot of things, but having a high health pool and surviving being blown up if he is locked down isn't one of them. No, definitely not. So we see Zavalosh, probably one of the best Rhaegars in the tournament, playing his baby boy. We see the ETC being locked in as well. Could be B-Guy, very much. And being joined by the Daka once again. I really think that is a very solid front line. It's a very solid front line and is a very strong front line and does give them a little bit of global potential and the return of Dehaka is always quite nice to see. So far, as we've said before, it has had a very successful win-loss ratio, except in the last series where Adaptation Dehaka uh, currently holds a one pick and 0% win rate in this tournament. All right, so we can see that tanks and supports are being prioritized by the Czech Republic. Oh, sorry, I messed that up, by the way. Zavolosh is not playing the Rhaegar, it's the Czech Republic. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> what, I would, what I wanted to say, the Czech Republic is focusing on tanks and supports here, whereas the Netherlands are going the exact opposite direction. They're focusing on heavy aggression on those damage dealers, on the Genji and the, uh, the Greyman. I think the Czech Republic, I asked that question before this draft started. Do they want to play standard or were they hoping for cheese? And this has given me my answer. They yeah. are definitely looking standard. They have picked up a frontliner. They've picked up a, an off tank and a global to soak those lanes. They've picked up the most standard support you can get. Yeah. They want to play a straight up game against the Netherlands. It's very difficult to cheese with this kind of comp. There aren't many available as we do wait to see what the ban from the Czech Republic is going to be. Uh, Amethyst already gone, and there's no chance of that double Grey Mane or double Genji. What else can work with this? Maybe another one of those burst supports with Brightwing already removed and the Czech Republic already having Rhaegar. Yeah, and I really want to see what Zawalus is going to pick up on that support right now. The Uther ban makes a lot of sense. This does not have anything to do with the Genji necessarily. Well, it could be a reason, but I think the more important thing here about this Uther ban is the fact that Zawalus' two main heroes are Uther and Rhaegar. And the other thing is all the cleanses, apart yep. from Lily, yep. are now off the field. I think the Brightwing ban might have been a major mistake from our Dutch team. They banned that Brightwing away from themselves. So now we have seen in the in our previous series, some of the teams, when they are down any cleanse potential, they have fallen back onto Ariel. Do you think this could be a viable choice here? I don't think so. I don't want to see it. The last time we saw Tracer Aureole, Genji Aureole, like a hyper mobile aggressive carry plus the Aureole, it didn't work out at all. Yeah, it didn't work out once yesterday in Tomb, but it still looked a bit shaky. And even the other game, it, yep. it looked like it was losing them the game. So I, I don't want to see the Aureole, but we are running out of options. I think. Well, they're, they're opting for a solo support as well. Yes, yeah, solo support. So in terms of healing numbers, there are still supports out there who can do this. Stukov, for example, is capable in terms of healing numbers for doing solo support. Lucio as well. We've seen a couple solo support. I want to see a Malfurion here. Malfurion can also do so. I think Malfurion is strong, but at the same time, he's very easy to counter when you see the ETC. I mean, we saw a series yesterday where the... I think it was Billy from yeah, the UK Billy, yeah. on the Malfurion. At first, he was having a great time against ETC, but as soon as that ETC focused down and said, okay, Billy is saving this game, let's stop him doing that, he had a very tough time doing anything past that point. It's really, it's really funny, isn't it? If you take a look at it, ETC and Dehaka provide so much pressure to almost any solo support. If you pick in a Morales, well, she could always get yeah, Dehaka's burn yeah. behind. Like, So no. maybe... It's hard to say, like, what about a Karazim to maybe bring the aggression towards the enemy team then? We have not seen a Karazim with any of his new buffed level one talents. That is, of course, Transcendence and Insight. This might be the game where it needs to come out because every other support pick is looking seriously flawed. So we're seeing Cassia and the Malfael coming in here for the Czech Republic. The Cassia going to be very effective against that Greymane. And if he's able to hold him still long enough, which ETC can do so against that Genji. I think it has to be Lucia. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think Lucia is my prediction. The blind yep. really does begin to shut down that potential of a Karasim, but for something like a Lunara, the Karasim could have maybe jumped up in terms of viability. But in this case, the Lucio yep. for that sound barrier against Mount Lael just is so huge. I think it's either going to be Lucio to provide all that AoE protection or still maybe the mouth, uh, the mouth Stukov, to provide the silence. Still. Stukov. We did see a very successful use of the massive shove against Kerrigan. Yeah. The same principle could be used against Malthael. And Flailing Swipe also getting huge yeah. value. Yeah. Again, on a Haunted Minds game. Lucio it locked in Lucio. now. With we the best say, Yeah, we did say it was potentially the best pick. And like you said, the Golden Frog, they swapped off the skin. So <laughs> slight concerns here, Bakery. I was voting for the Netherlands, I think, then. But they just swapped <laughs> the Lucio skin. I've changed my mind. Well, <laughs> right now, the chat appears to be leaning ever so slightly towards the Czech Republic, but this is the closest, now it is the closest vote we have ever seen wow. with a 50-50 vote ratio. So it is either the community out there not being convinced of the Dutch team anymore, or the Czech Republic has brought in their entire country to vote for the team here, it seems. <laughs> I like it though. 50-50, that's the closest matchup we could possibly go for. Unfortunately, we cannot get a 50-50 desk with there being three of us. So, I'm going to ask you, who do you think came up better? If we ignore the team names and what we've seen before, who came up with the better draft? I think the Netherlands, they have clear weaknesses and I do not like the solo support, Lucio. But I don't, uh, the Cassia, the Cassia has ruined it for me. I would have voted Czech Republic, but as soon as they locked the Cassia, we've never seen yep. it be successful. I'm voting for the Netherlands. Kendrick? I like the draft by Czech Republic, but I like the players of the Netherlands a little bit okay. more. Okay, so now include, because I said without the players, now including the players, what is your vote? Netherlands? Netherlands. Still leading with the Netherlands. The Lucio is still getting enough faith from our two casters. I do like the Balthael, but like you said, the Cassia really does bring concerns for me. Yeah, I'm having issues with this. The mouth ale, of course, could make up for that. Maybe the mouth ale is going to provide enough distraction in the front line for the Cassia to reign supreme. The real question is, are we going to see a Valkyrie or a Ball of Lightning? Because so far, Valkyrie seems to have actually been the favorite. I think Valkyrie is potentially very good to follow up that stun combo or even initiate. Yeah. But I mean, there is no cleanse, so it would get value there. But at the same time, I'm not sure they can actually kill anything yeah, if the sound barrier does connect. Who is the target? It would have to be Lucio, Lucio. who has boop counter potential. We have the, get the Grey Mane, who can jump into Walgard form. Genji, who dashes away. And if you're dragging in the Sonya or the Muradin, you are having a miserable time. Final thoughts, guys. I think the Netherlands are going to take it. They need to win at least one game so they can make any mistakes. So we are going to head, ladies and gentlemen, into game number one in this best of three series between the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. And Kendrick, what do you have to? Uh, would you like to introduce the team on the left-hand side? Oh, I would love to introduce my Dutch neighbors here. <laughs> we have the Comicron on the Sonya. B guy plays the Murden, and in the bottom lane we see their teammates six on that Genji. Atmos plays the Grey Main, and Zavalosh plays one of my favorite heroes, Lucio. Whereas on the right-hand side, fighting for both there and unintentionally Spain's life in this tournament, it is the Czech Republic with Resmex on the ETC, Deathra on the Cassia, Kenny playing the Rhaegar. We will. We have Zarkadis playing on the mouth there. We'll introduce the last wave in a second. This first blood goes over to the Czech Republic as they wreck the Greyman and in the top lane playing on that Dahaka. It is going to be. It is going to be Thray. Hiding, very being very sneaky. Yeah, that's what Dehaka does best. Being sneaky and surprise enemies from unexpected angles. Now, that was a pretty neat pickup by the Czech Republic, but don't let that fool you. First Blood in Heroes of a Storm sometimes is nice to have, but usually it doesn't mean a whole lot in terms of global XP. Now we see Genji 6 playing a couple of mind games yeah. here. Azumex trying to stun him with a power slide, but the ninja was too fast. It was a good reaction to have, but a little bit too slow. Right. Coming out from Red Specs here. As we do see Deathra, who are going to be the main damage dealer in this team until Malthael gets level 10. Just to try to put some pressure onto the bot lane. The difference with this lane setup is the fact that one ETC, very heavy tank with a little bit of self sustain, he will be able to frontline more than maybe Genji or Greyman can. The difference is Lucio is not going to need mana to keep his team topped up as much as Rhaegar is. And Deathra is doing such a good job thus far at staying safe by constantly moving and landing those spears on the gate. Once the uh, the spear lands, it's going to split in half and damage all the towers yeah. in a line. It is great both potential. He's also gone for, 
Nice spear. That is a good trade there for Dark Omicron. But we also have the charge strike yep. coming in for Cassie. That's going to be huge once we move into the actual team fight stage. And it's going to be nice when fighting uh, in amongst the minions here. And if we take a look at the lane setup here in general for the Czech Republic, each of their lane consists of a very solid hero. Malthale is definitely going to dominate whoever he faces. In that case, Murden, because the tankier target, and especially if it's a melee character, the more damage his passive is going to give to him. In the top lane, Sonya should normally, all, normally always dominate at Dehaka. In the bottom lane, we saw all the value provided by that Rhaegar, Ariel, and ETC, uh, excuse me, Cassia and ETC lane. Murden and Sonya currently holding their yep. level four talents. They both went for block at level one. We do still see the very standard Thunderburn coming in yep. from the Murden. Sonya, she will sometimes pick her focus attacks, but we have seen a couple seismic slam talents to increase that wave clear. The question is, how much do you want to commit to auto attack builds if you face the Cassia? Looks like Sonya still believes in the focused attack, and I can't yeah. really fault her for that because all she needs to do, and all she's probably going to do anyways, is chase someone down like Rhaegar or maybe the Mouthdale. But the Godos does get nice. taken out. Very nice kill indeed, and good timing. And as such, we will see three more heroes, well, two more heroes, sorry, rotating down to this tribute, because Sonya rotated from top to mid to soak the lane. All right, Zavalosh with that Accelerando level one talent can, of course, play very aggressively. He's going to have an insane amount of movement speed, and it looks like with the death of Malthael, the Czech team cannot really contest this anymore. Now Zavalosh had to yeah. drop channel low, ETC dropping low. ETC is dropping low, but Rhaegar keeping him healthy. Six not Ray, able what? to finish the okay. job, and Six in danger, but once again, that Lightning Fury, the Javelin from Sonya, not able to finish off, and Zavalosh again is forced to cancel. Here comes Malthael. Yeah, Zavalosh is buying a little bit of time by the same token, though, he needs to rotate as quickly as possible to arrive his teammate at his teammate's side again. And they got it indeed. And that is the power of a global. The Dehaka going with a huge flank. At nice. first, I wasn't really sure. Okay, that is a good tongue. Where's the damage? Well, we're digging through the team. Wow. Here comes Genji for the counter damage, and they can't finish off Dark Omicron. And it looks like they can't have a sip from the healing fountain, which is why they're going to have to pull back all together. But I think that leaves the bottom four completely exposed. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Czech Republic actually got it. And they even have one more siege time pushing with it as well. Like I said, the Czech Republic will push this in. Right now, very slight XP lead for the Czech Republic. Yep. They were able to it's get growing. the first tribute. They are even on kills. And right now, with their level sevens, we can see Malthael, by the way, with that dire load and, of course, that slowing uh, that slowing soul rent here. So he can get some very yep. solid 1v1 potential going. Interesting talent choice here by B-Guy on that level seven. We see the Skull Cracker. Now, this talent was changed over the last course of weeks here. No longer does it increase Muradin's attack speed. It only deals a mini stun now and a little bit of bonus damage on every third attack. See the burst of light used there by Death Rock, keeping himself alive and doing some AOE damage as he begins to move in, continuing to once again try and drop the spears, as it is going to be a 4v5 currently. But Dahaka could tunnel in, he's going to have to, his red dropping low. He's power sliding through, trying to get the stun. They focus down Burden, who is taking that Sonya also dropping low. They're on lunch from Kenny, picks up the kill. And the Czech Republic is turning on the heat. We didn't really think they would have a lot of chances here, but the Dutch team seems to be struggling. This early game doesn't look good at all. And we talked about it, Tetcher. The draft looked rock solid by the Czech Republic. Only the Cassia was a thorn in Bakery's side, but hey, they make this hero work like a charm up to this point. So far, it's going well. We'll see if it can continue to do so into the mid to late game, as once again, chat proves they're better at predicting than we are, as we currently see Czech Republic with a full level lead. And who would have thought that the Czechs can put up this much of a fight here against the Netherlands, who were considered to be a solid second, maybe even uh, first place in the group just by the sheer amount of talent they have in their roster with players like Zavalosh and, uh, you know, Dacomicron, respectively. Yeah. This will be a curse if the Czech Republic can grab this, but they Level can also nearby. now afford to yeah. give it up if they want to. B-Guy moving in, oh. beautiful power slide. Defra drops the drops the damage, though. He stays alive, gets cleansed, finally finished off by Zavalosh. B-Guy barely escaping. That was well executed by the Netherlands. Yeah, it's a good thing that B-Guy and the Murden dropped so low and everyone else in the team of the Dutch 
uh, yeah. national team stayed relatively healthy here Still because Burden's going to regenerate. And I think without the Castia, despite the fact they've got level 10, I'm not sure if they can fight, by the way. They're looking to deny at least. They don't, though. If we see the channel oh, finishing this time from Zabalosh as Thray is being focused. Tormented Souls, though, at the silence as they try to turn it round. Thray gets Ancestral, and that is enough to get everyone from the Czech Republic out. And Moshpit is still available as it was interrupted part way through. That is definitely all the Netherlands wanted to achieve here. They were trying to go for kills, sure, but they didn't get them. However, they forced a couple of long cooldown abilities out. Most importantly, the Tormented Souls and yeah. the Ancestral Healing. Now, those abilities won't be available anytime soon. And if level 10 comes quickly for the Dutch team, they can maybe reinitiate and force an engage. They are starting their own boss, but Czech Republic have already yeah, finished they theirs. Very but bad. this is going to be a long time. And what a tribute spawn for the Czech Republic. Resmex is uh, in a risky position. Is he going to force the leash? The thing this is, going to be a curse. Even if they get the boss, it's going to be a curse. Yeah, the thing is, I don't think the Dutch team can make it to level 10 in time. So they're like, okay, guys, we're going to take this curse. Yeah. But at least we get the boss out of it to keep the bottom link clean. But look at that. The rotation coming in immediately by the Czech Republic team. Cassia being joined by Regar and Malfail. They're pushing down the top board. And this is going crazy well for the Czech Republic. Top boss is still very healthy. ETC is beginning to take those siege giants. Wants them to join in with this boss push. They are looking a brutal for push. An, an eight, nine minute keep, Kendrick. They do abandon the siege giants though. There's only so much the Netherlands can do yeah. now. Their, uh, their defensive structures are not firing at all. And as you said, the siege giants could have actually joined here. ETC the was trying to join. get them, but he decides that frontlining and maybe getting a nice mosh pit in is more important. Mosh pit is available. Ball Light is available. Ancestral just came up. As the Tormenta solves the Haka can tunnel in if they want to try and make the play. As the keep is dropping down. Erez makes one of it, but a good zone back here yeah. from the Levelers as they want uh -oh. the counter play. The Snow Barrier dropped in advance. Tormenta Souls not getting a huge amount of value here. The Dragon Blade, though, is focusing down Deathra, who will get taken down. We oh. see a huge play killing off the Genji, though, as we see a lovely Dalcomicron trying to sustain through three members, and he's doing it. Is he going to get them? Focusing onto Zargonus, who will get taken down. Surprise to Harker, though. They want to turn oh, around. Spin to win, baby. Huge spin to win. Dark Chromicron refuses wow. to die as Thray is forced to retrieve. Resmex, his port is cancelled as him and Dahaka run for their lives. But a nice spear. Dahaka is only but delaying the inevitable at this point unless he can tunnel out. Last ditch effort. He's <laughs> buying time, waiting for his cooldown. Too much damage. He will go down. Okay, Titcher. This was a pretty nice cleanup for the Netherlands, right? The two star players, Zavalosh and Tecomicron, delivered. Especially the Sonya was cleaning house. But look at what happened. The top keep went down. And this is all the Czech Republic wanted to achieve. True, they lost a couple of heroes, yeah. but they traded temporal damage against permanent damage. And that is really always a good trade for the team that has a couple of heroes lost. They are also currently a level and a bit ahead. The Czech Republic still looking very solid despite losing those heroes. Dahaka has now returned. They have everyone yep. alive. This is fine. This is a pretty solid situation <laughs> here. And I love the pickup of that Encore coming in for Redbeck. As you can see, how willingly he how willing he was to play aggressive near the enemies capturing a boss. Yeah, exactly. And let's not forget about one thing either. The Czech Republic, they got the best keep they could have hoped for. It is the yeah. boss lane in the top lane. So any further boss attempts or any further unlocked bosses in the top lane are going to straight up go for oh, the core. Yeah, the Zagronis. Oh, oh my god. He's invincible. He escapes. He has to pop Tormented Souls. Yeah. But honestly, I'd rather have a living Malthael than a, than a dead Malthael with Tormented Souls. I mean, that is the question, right? So you need to take a, a macro look onto this. Is there any curse points nearby? No. Even if a tribute were to spawn, no. Nothing would have happened for the Dutch team. And as such, level 15 death timers are not really that long. So I agree. That's I think I would have actually saved the Tormented Souls. There's no bosses available. Nothing is available that the Netherlands yeah. could have used to punish. You are right. I actually said that the wrong way around. So we do see Balthael alive now, but without one of his biggest tools, which is such a big deal here. As we see, oh, look, at those, look at them go. up. They're going to potentially abandon the tribute. Yeah, it looks they're like going to abandon. They want to apply pressure elsewhere. Maybe get a tower here Most in the middle. Available. Maybe put some pressure on the middle keep. Because 
because they realize even if uh, the Netherlands get this uh, tribute, nothing's going to happen. It's only going to be two out of three. And the way they played it, they also managed to get a little bit more soaking in. And the 16 talent is definitely going to help them pick up the next one. Cocktail and party mix completed. Deathra. Uh, managing to escape thanks to the great zoning by Respect. Careful. Here comes Thray. They want the turnaround here. Looking for a player. Remember, no tormented souls here available for this. And oh, Respect is deleted. Ancestral not landing in time. Death was the focus. He goes down too. And the Netherlands. That's nice. Oh, I was going it's to the think. The Netherlands with almost a picture perfect player, but everybody is so low. Comes from missing the spear, but Murdered is bleeding out. Another ancestral not landing as we see Murdered, like you said, leaping over the wall to stomp onto the head of that Malphael. And we're gonna see the Netherlands picking up a curse yep. here. And this is the big turning point. Not only are the Netherlands going to get six that soon. That should be dealt with, though. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it, a I mean, the curse is going to do it, right? The curse is going to reduce all of those yep. minions to one HP, and boom. Two percent. Yeah, maybe oh, two, four. four percent. That's OK, though. That's definitely acceptable. But instead, they can now maintain momentum. They can now maintain the pressure here, and definitely capture some of those structures back that the Czech Republic took from them. Chris Mech's gonna try and zone as much as possible. These cocktails, remember, fully yep. stacked, so they're gonna have a pretty big impact. Nice drag, but into what? The curse is active. Moshpin is it. activated here. The ball lightning nice only fear. getting a single bounce there. The silence is nice. Ancestral is dropped tormented souls into the back line, doing so much damage. The second drag onto B Guy. They're trying to focus him. There's no nowhere to go. So he just sacrificed himself, so he'll be back soon. I think this was a heavy macro misplay here by the Netherlands. True, they wanted to get an engagement done here. True, they wanted to maybe get a keep. But what if they had taken that top loss? There was no way the Czech Republic could have actually contested that. And keep in mind what we said a couple of moments earlier. This would have been a boss that threatens the core right now. They could have denied that. Yeah. They could have taken the boss, maybe then go to a different lane, or maybe go for a double boss play. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The Netherlands, I think, too aggressive here. They wanted to force a play that was too risky to make. Both teams get bosses. The Netherlands, they did manage to press Pressure, mid and bot in terms of minion pressure to weaken those front walls. But like you said, they lost Murad and as such, there yeah. is now a potential core attempt available for the Czech Republic if they want to take the risk. Bot and Ancestral Ooh, and the Torment Souls not available though. This is a risky Merkin. If the yeah, Comic-Con dies here, the game could be over, Tender. Yeah, the isolation has been used. So many stuns. Dark Comic-Con gets job, barrier. now barrier, though. The Dragon Blade onto Zargonos. The, sword, the Earth Shield, though, keeps him alive. Finally, Six is able to finish him off as he looks for more. Oh. He goes down to the Javelin, though. Death Row with an important kill on the Genji. It is still a two-for-one trade, but the boss is already on the core. It is at 96%. I'm not even sure if the shield was fully regenerated yet. They're moving in. b is delaying onto Death Row, who has to drop that Bob first of light ball. there. Thray is focusing. This is a bad call, as we're seeing Thray. Ancestral, though, that is good. Kenny, very yeah. low on mana. Death Row has mana. no health. Thray, he's being a, such a good distraction, though. He's unlivable. Look at him with that extra armor. <laughs> but everyone else is too low. All the boss right. of the Netherlands is off the core, and the Netherlands run across the map. That is going to be it. That will be GG. Where is it? Is it? The boss is pitting relatively weak here, and I think Resmex will have enough damage to it's actually be deal with 20, it. It's going to be a 20% core versus five members of the Netherlands, though. I mean, two members can't defend They that. still take a while in Malfail. No, they can actually stall a little bit of time here. I think they can maybe they have out. They have Bosch, I guess. They could try. Yeah. It's going to be two. They drop the Tormented Souls, focusing down. Try to deal care. with B-Guy. The shield is not fully recharged. Resmex trying to zone away. Double the stop. core is going down. Bosch only gets one. That's it. Sound barriers dropped and GG. Game number one goes to the Netherlands. And with that, several dreams are crushed. Spanish dreams. Spanish dreams, Czech <laughs> dreams, many yeah, dreams. Yeah. yeah, the Netherlands secured themselves a very good position here for the rest of this tournament. They are making it out of groups, and that is a wonderful thing to have. Yeah. But I still got to say, the Czech Republic were this close to taking a game off the Netherlands here. I feel like a lot of our lower tier teams in this tournament have been so close to making amazing plays and making yeah. great games. But something's a little bit off and they lose because of it. And I yeah. do want to highlight once again, they drafted extremely well. So the game knowledge was there. The execution was there for the longest part of the game. The early mid game looked sensational with a two to three level lead even. But in the end, I think it was individual class, especially by Tuck Comicron and Zavalos that turned it around.
So, Bakery, what do you have to show us from that game? So the first replay I have to show you guys is just how strong the shot calling from the Czech Republic yep. is. So they see the health bars and they call they want a fight. The hacker starts digging, RZMX starts taking damage to bait them into a fight. He even slides back in knowing that it's very low chance he can die. As soon as the hacker arrives, they pulled everyone off of the tribute. Now a single member is hanging back as they chase forward, they get two kills. They secure themselves a one level lead and that tribute. They really did. We, and this is the difference between the shot calling we saw there and the shot calling at the end, pushing it into five people. I really did enjoy, though, Cassia tried to stay alive. But before you show us the next replay, do you think Cassia was still the wrong call? I do think so. I mean, we saw how far they got ahead in terms of XP, but they just did not have the damage. And the mouth they tormented souls did not do enough in any fight this game. And that's what my next replay is going to show us. So they're pushing the keep. Now, they are so close to level 13. They want to wait for level 13 before they fight here. But as we roll it forward, I want you guys to watch B Guy. He plays this amazingly. He keeps running forward. He baits the slide from RZMX for a perfectly wow. timed jump. And now they are forced to fight. So Ancestral has to be blown. Tormented Soul is blown. Absolutely no value. He's running away with it. So still, Death Row gets super low. The Moss Pit that cleanses half a second too late. And that does mean that it gets cancelled. They end up trading one for one. They do get one more kill, of course, onto the Mjordan. But now they seriously underestimate how much damage Sonya does. All three of them are just stood here in the spin to win. She is healing more damage than she is taking. And they are all dying. So now they need to run away. They have been level 13 this whole time, but look at the talents at the top. These three members have not picked level 13 talents mm. because the fight was going on while they did level up. Now, Dehaga digs back in, but there's just not enough damage here. You cannot kill Sonya. And this is where the Netherlands turn the game from losing and losing hard to being back in it and having a foot in the game. So you can see there, you mentioned the talents especially. This is something that can really, we saw the, uh, the Czech Republic there, really good shot calling, very nice team fights a lot of the time and just superb game knowledge in general. But it's little things like that, little things that can be worked on over time that will allow a player to grow from a really good player to a great player. Yeah, that's for sure. I do want to say, though, that almost every sound barrier Zavalos cast in this game hit at least three or four people and absorbed tons amounts of damage. And I really think that without the strong Lucio play, this game could have been a different one. So this series is still not over. Despite the fact the Czech Republic could not go through, they still uh, can take this series to just boost, their uh, boost themselves up a little at the end table, if you will. So where would you like to see the map go to for this?